Alrighty, guys. How are we today? I'm gonna be getting into Baldur's Gate today. Oh, I was just thinking about it. I was thinking about games I'd want to play, and um, I started thinking about games that I just games that when I was younger I was never very good at, but I always wanted to be good at or have f more fun playing. And I had fun playing Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Um, but I never felt like I was very good at Baldur's Gate 1 or 2. And um, I'm hoping today to break that. Break that chain. That curse. That heavy weight around my neck. That held me down as a child. Kept me from rising on up. Becoming the best. Um, I think it'd be, uh, it looks like everything I've heard about the game, it looks like it's gonna be phenomenal. Um, I'm super excited about it. I really want to get into playing the game today. Um, I think that, I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. I've had a lot of fun with the games that are like it that have come out recently, but, um, like games, like, for example, like, uh, Divinity Original Sin, or, um, that's another one that I played that's a really good game like this that I played a whole bunch of. I really just played a ton of Divinity Original Sin. Um, I'm never going to play two. I'm never going to play the second Divinity Original Sin game. Um, so, being able to play this, I think is going to be good. I'm pretty excited for it. Um, I think I know what I'm going to play already, though. I don't know what the races are that are available in game, so I don't know about that. But I do know that I would want to play a fighter into an eldritch knight. I think that'll be really cool. Represent, you know, get a little rep repping up the eldritch knight. Um, because I saw they had that, and I was like, I'm playing that for sure. They have it. It's available. We're playing it. That's gonna happen. That's just the way of the world, chat. Um. Other than that, I was also thinking about... Oh, I had so many ideas of who I could play. I think we'll do that. I think we'll do that. Um, because I know that rules is written. Rules is intended. Um, rules is probably interpreted. That'll be the easiest thing to get into for me. Um, some of the other stuff I like to do... I don't know how the game would handle it. Like, if I did a heavy grappler-based character... Will I be able to use shove and shove someone prone... Hey, yeah, see, Taiki? It's going to be Baldur's Gate. Um, like, there's things I like doing in D&D quite a bit. Like, I like playing uh, a grappler-centric character where I'm grabbing people and I'm throwing them on the ground and all that other kind of, and, like, uh, using attacks on them when they're in a prone position where I have an advantage against them and I can beat them and all those other kinds of like that, right? I love doing that, but I don't know how Baldur's Gate 3 is going to handle that. If I grapple somebody and my grapple-focused character, like a barbarian, right? Barbarian, if he rages, he gets advantage on strength checks and strength-based abilities. Uh, so I grapple him. That's an attack um, that I'm making. So I, I'm going to be able to have advantage on that. I grapple him. Um, and then it becomes a contest of athletics versus their athletics or acrobatics. It's a strength-based check. Guess what? I get to have advantage on that, too. Um I take that I, I have a chance to take him down if I if I go ahead and I grapple them then do I get to shove them um, and do I shove them just shoving them away from me or can I shove them prone that's one thing that a lot of grapplers early game are gonna always focus on is be able to shove people prone or uh, if they're a barbarian that is or, or um, like how are they gonna get someone to a prone position because you're gonna want someone in a prone position no matter what when you are like grappling them because if you can grab them and you take them prone what you end up doing is is you don't have to go prone with them but what you can do is is that you effectively if you've ever seen someone um, in wrestling holding someone by their legs while their torso's on the ground that's what you're doing except for you're like holding them by one leg with one hand and you're just like leaning over and pounding them in the face every now and then. Like, I don't have to go down to the ground. I can still stay upright and I have control of them. Um, it's, it's, uh, you're doing some crazy psycho stuff um, in D&D when you hold someone. Or basically you have them on the ground and you hold them by their hair and then you just pound on them if they try to stand up. Like, that's what you're doing. Um, like, you, you get real dirty. But I don't know how that Baldur's Gate 3 will handle that. So instead of trying to think about building a grapple character that may end up just not working because um, the rules is written, rules is intended, rules as ruled by DM kind of a thing. Uh, I think that's technically rules as written. You can 
push someone prone. Um, you could shove someone prone. But I think rules as intended, I don't think you sh are going to be able to because there are already other... There are, there are like fighting st things that uh, fighters get, like trip and whatnot, that would allow you to take someone prone as an action, right? Um, so I, I don't think that it'll let me do brawling the way I like to brawl. But uh, other than that, I think that the, the most straightforward thing would just be an Eldritch Knight. It's available in the game. Yeah, dude, battle mastering. Battle mastering someone into the earth. But then, then, but here's the thing. What's the... It's after an attack, yeah. Um, I thought you could take the, the special maneuver and just trip someone. I didn't know you had to make an, uh, an attack. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter because grapple is an attack. Grapple, uh, grappling, so, Grabbing someone is... You have to use the attack action to do it. So if I grapple someone, I can grapple them, and then after the grapple, I can trip them. Yeah. Um, but anyways, but then again, why, I would, why would I want to be a battle master if I was going to be a barbarian? I'd have to go ahead and sink three levels into fighter in order to do that. Um, it just, like I said, it really depends on how your DM does it. It's super dependent on how your DM does it, which is why I like D&D. Um, if, D &D, if a DM says, no, I don't want you to do that, I was like, all right, well, then I'm going to play as a, a bite monk. What's a bite monk? I'm going to play as a lizard folk monk, and I'm going to use my natural weapon of my mouth to make flurry of blows bites against my foes. I'm just going to bite everything. Viciously. It's going to be horrible. You're going to hate me. <laughs> and then I'm also going to go three levels into Barbarian. Uh, are there no feats? Maybe we can get superiority. I could. I could. I could do exactly that. I could take a superiority. But you know what I'd have to do? I'd have to take the feat as my second chance to feat. So I'd have to skip out on two stat increases. Because my first one will always go into Tavern Brawling. Because Tavern Brawling allows me, after an unarmed strike, to make a free grapple. So let's say um, I get into a fist with somebody. I can punch them. I can then make a free attempt to grapple them immediately afterwards. Um, which then I can then take my second attack on them now that I have them grappled. Um, and it, as a and here it's even better that if you think of it this way, Taiki, because I always like play I like playing a Minotaur, right? Well, Minotaur can at the end of a sprint make an attack with their horns. Well, if I make that attack, it's an unarmed attack because I'm using my natural weapon. I can sprint, strike, grapple, and um, there's my turn. I, I've grappled you at the range of 80 feet. You cannot escape me. <laughs> the mage in the back, I've got him in my hands. He's mine. And I have, like, what is that one feat you can grab? Uh, the other feat that I like grabbing a lot is the, um, the, uh, it, it's like, what, it's, is it mage killer? Or what is the, what's the name of the thing where if someone casts a spell within five feet of you, you get to make an attack of opportunity against them. And it tests their concentration immediately. Before they even get to cast a spell. I can't remember what it is. Mage Slayer. Yeah, that's it. I, I love Mage Slayer when I'm grappling people. Because it's like, I dare you to cast a spell. I dare you. I'm going to break your mind. I'm going to mind freak them. <laughs> they call me Mind Freaker. Because I freak their mind. <laughs> it's stupid. I love it. It's stupid, though. Oh, man. That's funny, though. Um, yeah, all right. So um, that was what uh, there was it. The I, I liked my Minotaur uh, Bard Barian that I play in my actual s sessions because I get to do a bunch of silly stuff and I grab everybody all the time. Um, Sentinel is very good. I I like Sentinel. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. OK, there are certain feats that I love, but I hate them. I hate Sentinel. I love hate Sentinel. I love Sentinel. If I get to use it, I hate Sentinel seeing it be used. If that makes sense to you. Because Sentinel is like the anti-fun uh, feat that a player picks to mess with their DM. It like It's like... It's like, oh yeah, actually, you. I, I have, I'm a polearm dude. I get 10 r fit range. I have Sentinel. And no one can get past me because I'm going to karate slap them to death. No one even think about it, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the actual I hate this thing. Um, I honestly have thought about it with DMing to 
to, to ban or modify some feats because there is so much homebrew to modify feats to be less op um, or to just ban them and replace them with a, a home like a homebrew feat like that's also appetizing that i don't think will be as anti-fun like there are some feats that are really cool but i feel like they're anti-fun for the dm and the thing is is what you have to realize is that is that's if they hit though that's true that's true techie that's if they hit um um, there's, there's a lot of stuff that I, uh, what is it? There's that other one though, that you can, if someone were to get hit, you can get, wait, no, that, that, I'm thinking, I'm starting to mix up Pathfinder. There's a, there's a thing that you can do in Pathfinder where if someone gets hit near you, you can, uh, effectively, uh, stop the hit before the damage, like let the hit happen. The damage doesn't get calculated because you intercede and reduce their damage by a flat amount. And then you make a counter attack as well against that person it's it's insane so like if the person is does less than your flat damage reduction that you get to apply to the damage dealt like oh well they get to take eight less damage oh well i was only gonna do six well then you do no damage and i hit you in the head for trying to strike them um it makes you play like a tank and that's cool but you don't ever suffer a negative effect. I think that that feat would be kind of cooler if the um, damage dealt over the threshold is dealt to you instead. So you can force the damage onto yourself. Um, or it... No, better yet! Better yet! The damage above the threshold is dealt to the player's shield and to the enemy... Uh, like, yeah, that's how it would have to be. Half the damage dealt to the player after the threshold is also dealt to the interceding player's shield because shields have HP in Pathfinder. So, um, like, let's say the player is going to take 13 damage. Well, I just I reduce it by eight. Okay, that means there's still five damage left, right? Well, take split half lower, uh, rounding down. Two damage is dealt to your shield. The five is dealt to the player. Um, this makes it so that like there there's a cost to the person doing it because really if you use that move it's a completely free move to do it doesn't hurt you ever to do that move it's always an advantage to use that move there's no thought involved in using that move oh, but the person doing it already the the archetype that gets that they're going to be wielding a shield that B is like if you're going to the thing is is that the, the, the archetype who gets that uses a shield i think it's like a um it's a paladin. It's a paladin that gets it. Paladins get favored weaponry, just like priests do. And um, in Pathfinder, yeah, exactly. Like, a paladins get that in, in Pathfinder, and it's like a thing that uh, th they get, like, a favored weapon, and almost all their favored weapons are one-handed. Um, so, like, their, their deity weapons are almost all one-handed. So, you're more than likely going to be having a shield. Um, and if you aren't raising the shield to defend yourself and you're defending somebody else with it, if you were to raise your shield to defend yourself, it takes damage when struck. So if you're raising your shield to defend somebody else, it should take damage when struck. That's how I think about it. Um, but then again, I, I am a person who loves to punish, loves to add a negative with a positive. And there should be some things that should just be a positive. I, I always like there being negatives with positives and everything. Uh, if I think that it's like of a high benefit. I don't think like flat HP uh, gain or like, oh yeah, I get to have one free bonus action this round because of skimmity bop bibop. Because I'm less than half HP, I get to have a free bonus, extra, a three extra bonus round this round, every round. Yeah, that's it. I'm always yes, but no, no, no. Yes, and he's like yes, and it's at uh, you. You get to do this as well. It's always a yes, but yes, but here comes the monkey's paw. Like that's how I love things to be. I love things to be yes, but the monkey paw though. Um, I love doing that. Okay, let's get into this wonderful game. Um, one of my favorite things I, I would say though, one of my favorite things about D. D&D &D and any real tabletop is that the system is always there for you to manipulate into a game that you will find to be better for you and your players. Knowing the mindset of your players and knowing the expectations that they hold, as well as the game that you wish to run and the game which you let them experience, is quintessential to the system. And I think that allowing the players to know too much about a system is detrimental to not only their fun, but the fun of the DM. Um, unless, of course, that is the kind of 
thing you like to do, which is where you like to work within the rules. But I feel like the people who wish to abuse the rules are often the people who get angry when the rules are applied consistently to them. When they die, for example, they may be upset about it because, well, I built this really also ultimate Omega character. He shouldn't be dying. Well, that's just not how it goes. If we're going to be playing to the actual T, the actual bringing it all the way up to the actual limit, then you should be willing to accept the results up to the actual limit of how the game intends them to be uh, forced against you. Um, I think that the best games are when the players don't know all the rules, but they know the rules that matter to them. They know how HP is generated, when they can heal, when they can't, how they can attack, when they can't attack. And I don't think they need to know more than that. When a player comes to you and says, I'm going to use... I'm guessing I'm very lucky my players and my table are all on my vibe. Yeah, that's very important. Um, I, I have a game right now where we have... Um, uh, we have I have a game that I play in in which there is a player who plays D&D &D like a video game. Um, in that he's the main character and he makes all the decisions. And even when his character shouldn't have a vested interest in it, he will make a comment on it or try to influence other people's decisions. I don't think that's appropriate. I think that that's the worst thing you can do, especially when it gets to a place where you're telling other people, why would your character do that when they have when that's a, how your character that's a part of your character's character um my character why would i do that well because it's not advantageous it's not the smartest thing to do but it's what my character would do if you have a problem with that outcome um then maybe that's something that your character my character should talk about maybe you shouldn't be asking as a player why my character is doing something unless it's something that directly interferes with you and your character um, the only time a player should ask another player why the character is doing that is if it's an interaction between their characters. Because and that's the only time it affects you. If the DM wants to ask me that, that is that is their absolute God-given right as the DM of that game to ask that question. But you as another player, and me as another player, should never be asking you, the other player, or me, the other player, why we are doing something that is in our character. If our character would do that, that's fine. Especially if it has no effect on you. If my character is something in character and you are getting affected by it, you can ask me why I would do that. And I can explain it to you as to why my character do it. But you then can't say that doesn't make sense because that's for the DM to decide whether or not that makes sense with how I've described it. Um, I hate when players try to be the final arbiter when they are not the DM. If you want a DM, then I suggest you run a game. I suggest you not play the game because you seem to have an inability to let go and let somebody else run things. Um, that's one of the biggest, that's one of the things I love the most about being a player is I don't have to think about all the rules. I only have to think about uh, hitting things. And if my DM says I can do that, or I can de or I can steal that item, or I can, in fact, trick that mimic into giving me all of the stuff that he's holding inside of his stomach for a handful of shiny rocks that I have um, just made to look like gems because I'm really good at lying at him. And I also have uh, press a digitate as a spell. Um, you know, I, that's my right. That's my God given right as a wily trickster to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think the mindset, I think video games and D and D need, I, Here's the thing. I love D&D video games. I hate when people think that D&D is a video game. Or treat it like... <sighs> this is where I'm going to get starting into really opinions. Big opinion mode. Is that this is a big opinion. I, 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 I'm going to preface this as a big opinion. If you don't agree with me, good. That means that you have an opinion too. And you don't agree with me. But I will never back off this opinion. Um, people, D&D... Uh, is not a game to be won. It is a cooperative action to seize uh, an objective. Now, you might say, well, the objective is victory. Well, not always. The objective is either to uh, see to the end of your character's story. Now, if your story ends in victory, if your story ends with riches, fame, being written into the, the annals of history, then that is, in fact, the goal for you and that can be how you win D&D is by achieving that because that's what your character's goals are that is the go that is what 
That is how you win D&D. D&D can only be won by achieving your character's stated goals that are inherent to them or to the overarching narrative that your character has bought into. You cannot win D&D by beating every single combat, by acing every single social interaction, by and making sure to always couch your language in a maybe sort of kind of sort of maybe sort of possibly nothing's committed nothing's uh, meant to be said everything is always uh just hinted at because if i commit to it and i'm wrong then i'll have to deal with consequence this isn't how this works um the, if you want to have that language then you can either be in a board meeting or you can go play a video game to let you do it and let you save scum because that's what you're trying to do in a conversation when you do that in D. &D. you're trying to save scum through a conversation I one thing I always tell players is that I want you to be committed to your answers. Unless your character is a character who is non-committal when he speaks to things, I don't want my paladin to come in and be a non-committal person. If he's a paladin and he's strong of faith and mind and he's committed to a cause, he needs to speak like that. I don't want uh, my fighter who doesn't negotiate social interactions well and is uh, fairly straightforward and blunt to come in and try to talk his way around the Baron. I want my fighter to come in, make his statements. If he has a demand of some sort of assistance that needs to be given to him in order to achieve a goal, he needs to make that statement. I don't want him to come in here and basically... I don't want every player to act like they're the bard. Not everyone's the bard. And not everyone is the rogue. Please, guys. If you're going to play your character, play him in all aspects. Yeah, exactly. Paladins have oaths, and th they should take that seriously. Every I, th th The most common L of a player in modern d d is everyone plays their characters in social interactions like they're the bard or the rogue. Please stop. You are not the eloquent one. You are not the liar. You are not the manipulator. Sometimes you are the earnest wizard who has earnest questions. And sometimes you're willing to ask the question that's kind of uncomfortable, because guess what? In your mind, you're pursuing knowledge. And if you ask, how come it is that you are able to sustain your Arcana Crystal manufacturing production line? It seems that that would take quite a bit of infused mana from the local area. Uh, how are you able to do that? There seems to be no effect to your local wildlife or landscape. But you're also currently investigating the missing, the uh, people going missing in mass throughout the countryside. And this, you're talking to a king of a nation who seems to be not bothered by it. Oh, you're asking the hard question. Maybe, maybe he, these kind of characters aren't being fueled by mana. They're being fueled by stolen souls and because you're asking that blunt question you're actually getting at the heart of a problem without you your character knowing he's getting at the heart of that question because your character is interested in something that they have manufactured and generated in their country that you've never seen before because you know what goes into it you know how hard it is produced and because of that how are they having such stable manufacture not having any it's not weakening the land by pulling mana from the earth they they seem to have abundance of it you don't know you you don't, they're not buying these crystals. They said they're making them all locally. Then how are they doing it? And that's a question that your character asks and you stumble upon something. Um, and like, I hate that everybody's like, oh, well, you know, maybe sort of kind of, I which is just wondering. No, you're not. You don't just wonder. You're asking, ask forthright, be forthright. I, I that's, there's only two, there's only a few characters I accept that from. And people get a little peeved at me because I don't accept them to talk that way when they've written their background they told me their characters tenets and they've told me their guys uh goals and ideals and then when they try to talk to uh npc i tell them why are you asking talking like that and they say oh well, i'm sorry no you're not you're talking not like that's not how your character was described to me we talked about it in session zero we had this conversation a little bit about how i ex have the expectations of these characters why are you now that we're playing trying to couch everything in if buts and maybes when that's not what we talked about and i i've confronted players about it before i have no problem doing it i've never mean about it but i am very i'm very hard line about this i the goal of the game is not to win the game, goal of the game is to achieve your character's goals and if you have goals that on the outset then we can work towards those goals and i will give you a world to work towards those goals within and you will be able to have a fun and engaging time as long as you don't play this like a video game 
Um, that is, uh, but uh, here I am talking about this while I'm about to play a D&D video game. That's what I, uh, I like. I want my D&D video games to stay D&D video games. And I want my D&D to stay not being a video game. I'm a crotchety old man, and I'm waving my fist at clouds in the sky, screaming violently to the all, the great sun mother. You know, it's just how I am. <laughs> I do this sometimes. Um, but, I mean, without passion, what is there in life? Nothing but blandness. So we're going to close off the music. We're going to launch this game, and we're going to get into it, chat. I'm going to hit play, and it's going to beeple at us as I forgot I haven't launched this yet, and it's going to install Microsoft scripts. Hold on. <laughs> Give it a second. Dude, yeah, for real. I, mean, I think it's important. You have to be... is older than I recommend. I haven't updated my graphics drivers. Should I... Mmm... Mm. Should I just do that real quick, chat? Is that something I can do real quick? Let me hold on. I'm gonna put the music back on real quick, and I'm gonna chat at you. I don't. I want to see if I'll have to restart when I do this. If I don't have to restart when I update these graphics drivers, then we'll just do that real quick. Though usually they want you to do that real quick. Um, so I'm gonna do this real fast while I'm chatting at you guys. Anyways, um, I'm not gonna restart no matter what. Um, if that doesn't if that doesn't make this game happy, then I'll cry myself to sleep. That's just how I do. Okay, can't stop me. Um, but yeah, no, I think um, I think I'm gonna be very happy with this game. I think it's gonna be really cool. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Like I said, I always love Baldur's Gate games. Baldur's Gate games was my my first taste of what um, D and D could be like. Uh, I'm w I'm happy to try them out. I'm try ha I'm always happy to have fun with them. Um, I think that, that this will be a great game. I don't see why it wouldn't. They wouldn't be getting the, all the acclaim that it has if it wasn't gonna be good. You know what I'm saying? I think it's gonna be great. So, I will say this real quick, chat. Have you known, did you know, Larian Studios, they have dropped Divinity Original Sin 3. They're not going to do it. I think they've canceled development of it entirely. There's going to be no Divinity Original Sins 3. I heard this. Did you hear this? Because I did. That sucks a little bit. That's what I heard when they really when they went to release this. That it's such a, a smash mash success. I think they just gave it gave it up. Well, I think they canceled a little bit before this, but I'm pretty sure I heard they canceled it. Now, if you want to go look up a source and correct me, I would actually be super happy if you did. But I'm I'm pretty sure I heard that they canceled the, the development of uh, Divinity Original Sin three. Vigil Sin 2 had some of the cooler characters that I've stolen stuff from several times in making D&D characters. Dude, the Ske the Skelly Boy or Skelly Boy who can't live among